Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and I guess I have to throw a win to Pittsburgh here because they they bothered to make this thing. This is a dual-sided kind of a non-marring mallet. It's they say it's a three-ounce head, sells for you know six dollars, five dollars and ninety-nine cents, and I'm sure somebody will figure out how to use a coupon and then get it for even less or free or something. But anyway, for the price. Uh, even at full full retail of six dollars, I think it's a, it's a good hammer. It's got a unique, you know, almost sci-fi futuristic look to it, uh, and I don't think that's um, because they were trying to be artsy. I think they were trying to cut costs because I can see a lot of places they cut costs, but that's how you get a six dollar non-marring hammer with two faces. But anyway, the overall design of this, well, first of all, they do have a slight increase in the size of the handle as you move from, you know, ha hammerhead uh, to the end. Um, not much. Most swell up to, you know, more of a human to hand size. This is more of a stick. Uh, a lot of inexpensive hammers sometimes just do a slight taper. Um, the grain on this is pretty much the opposite of anything you would want. However, at a three ounce non-marring hammer, I don't think you're ever going to notice that. Um, basically, it's running almost perfectly perpendicular. That's hard to do to the uh, striking direction, which is opposite of what you want. You, you want the... Um, well, here's an example. When it really matters, so I've got a uh, Grand Force Brooks American felling axe here. So we go out all the way to the end, and you can see here that that grain structure is running pretty much parallel to the stroke that you use when you're, when you're operating the thing. It's not perpendicular. It's parallel. That's what you want. So if you've got an expensive or a heavy or a... Um, you know, more of a precision tool that that really comes into play, but I decided to compare it to a few others. So anyway, first of all, before I do that, let's take a closer look at how they built this thing. These are uh, steel. I don't think it's stainless. I just think it's maybe a chromed or something. You can see the finish work. Not all that great. Um, they use an O-ring, and then they've got these little... Um, set that down. Use my hammer here. Uh, they've got these little nubs. This one's some kind of a acrylic. You could either make your own or maybe get another or in fact you could even machine all kinds of other materials if you wanted. All it has to do is fit through here with a tiny collar. So that doesn't look like it'd be too difficult to work with. On this side, same thing. You've got a brass one. Again, pretty crunchy when it comes to the threads, the o-ring and then uh, the brass plug. Simple design, and if both of them are dead, you've got now a little steel striking mallet that's probably just a couple ounces. So easy to put back together, drop the O-ring in, screw it back on either side. Um, it seems like they could easily come out with a set of various other heads for this thing. Not a lot of work going into it, but overall for the five bucks or six bucks, um, yeah, especially when you price some of these, if you do gunsmithing or some precision work, you price some of these things. This is a lot of stuff that could get in the way, you know, maybe if you overstruck or something, but overall for the, for the price, I'm, that's where I'm impressed. Um, I did unscrew this and tried to pull the handle off. It, it appears to be both glued in there and there's a set screw. Um, but if we take a look at some of the other grain structure on these, like here's a blue point. This is one of my favorites. I think it's been discontinued. I love the thing, but you can see near perfect. Now I am sure that was random or near random. Um, others, well, here's a super cheap one off of um, probably Amazon or somewhere. You can see that. I had to double do a double take. Yeah, that's near perfect as well. However, here's PB Swiss, one of my favorite tool companies, not a cheap hammer by any means. Look at that. It's not terrible. It's at an angle, but you'd think maybe they would want to up their game a little bit. It also, you can really start to get into some, uh, some weeds if you get into what part of the tree the handle actually came from and, and the green there. Halder, 
well, it's an inexpensive, not too far off. I mean, obviously, we'd be looking at going this direction. Instead, we're going this direction. These hammers, you're never going to generate the force probably to break that. Uh, here's Gador Red. They're pretty... <laughs> they're... I don't know if that's a 45. If it was a 44 degree, then it's closer to being per or perpendicular. But anyway, so it's not quite there either. Uh, so I dug up some old ones. Here's a, a probably 1950s plum. Um, and I had to do a double take on this. Yeah, though that's the grain. So whatever wood they're using, it either rained a lot or something. There's huge gaps in between. Let me get that to focus in there if I can. Come on. Pretty wild. You can see how those run up the handle. But anyway, uh, here's an old snap-on. This is a snap-on body hammer, and I've, this has appeared before, and the handle's cracking. Well, that might have something to do with it. It's pretty much opposite what you want. Um, how about a stiletto? Fancy, expensive. Let's take a look at that. That's off quite a ways as well. Not, not a deal killer probably, um, you know, but it is off. You would think that they'd spend a little bit more time trying to balance that out. But anyway, um, oh, and then this one here is like the world's cheapest rubber mallet. I think I did a video on this. It was, just, I don't remember, $2.99 or something for when you just really need a small, cheap rubber mallet. Look at that. Near perfection. Uh, and also when, I'm, when I see the, the grain that evenly spaced, it's obviously from a climate that's pretty, um, pretty uniform um, for the growth. And then also probably uh, maybe a tree farm. Um, anyway, back to this guy, wherever it went, the little Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh mallet, that's not it. There it is, way down at the bottom. Um, not bad, you know. You can just grind these down with sandpaper if it's just a little, or buffing wheel, whatever you want. Uh, this will stay in the fight for quite a while, but a lot of times these are sacrificial. I mean, that's the whole point. So getting a really nice brass hammer, a really nice plastic hammer, I don't know. So anyway, I thought I'd bring that to your attention. It was sitting way at the back of the Harbor Freight store. I usually never wander beyond a couple of aisles, but um, I thought, wonder what's down here and looked and saw this and thought, amazing. They really should promote this thing, um, especially for people who are doing, you know, small detail work, you know, who you might even get a couple of these and build your own. Um, and I'll leave with one other thing. Snap-on did nail it here. I should throw a, some praise out to them. If you look at their plastic hammers, look at that. That grain goes right down the center. Perfect, huh? Anyway, with that, dock out.